It's a quick field trip to the launch pad for ship 37 as we get caught up on this Starbase summary. Kicking it off, just a quick, quick little check-in at the Massey's test site over there. Going to jump over here. Looks like we've punched in on this. A little tough to see, but there you can see the crane lifting something up. Exposure's a little better when we back out of the shot there. And uh, potentially a hold down of some sort, getting a crane-assisted takeoff over there at the second pad. Continuing to see that come together right now. It looks like the doozers are uh, in full effect making all of the scaffolding around this. But hopefully someday somebody shows up and eats it all so they can actually launch a rocket. See a little Pad 2 tank farm testing there. You see some vapors in some places that they aren't usually when we're just doing regular maintenance. All those big massive pumps, then the red emergency cutoffs you see there, and uh, the vapors from a few different angles in the background. Again, testing things, probably leak checking things, blowing out the, I always want to say blowing out the carbon, but there's not a lot of carbon involved, honestly, being a methane-powered rocket. But let's hop over to launch mount one. Little, what is that thing? Got the little rope lights still and a pole, a bar, something with a tagline on it. It's going all over, but being removed from the top of the launch mount. Over this way, we're going to see a ship load spreader being lifted in Mega Bay 2. You can see the crane in the background there, the big shackles. Here we go. Let's see what we get when this thing comes up. All right, it's under tension. There you go. So again, these things, the load spreaders, they make it so that the crane with a single attachment point up at the top isn't smashing the load, right? That bar in the middle holds those two slings out at an angle so that the, the force acting on whatever they're lifting is straight up and down. It's, it's a vertical force. Uh, it's not trying to squeeze it together. Got some flaps being installed as well back in the Mega Bay. I feel like we need to go ahead and level that camera. But uh, we continue to see there's a little bit of movement there, actually. Going to get a ship transport stand. These are tough to see because they're just in the background, but if you blur your eyes a little bit, the uh, transport stand there, you can see it moving around. Of course, that's because, well, there's some ship that needs to be transported. More on that later. We're coming up to that. God, it is really tough to see there in the background. Here's the pad two launch mount again. Again, the two quick disconnects up on the mount. But uh, besides the single patrol of the Boca Chica Air Force there going by, just coming by and checking in on the footage to see what changes have been made. A little bit of a zoom in on the methane booster quick disconnect. It is really interesting how they've separated those things off, but uh, the top up there is what we're looking at. Here's the Pad 2 Deluge Tank Farm. Bunch of water and pressure systems to push the water through that uh, differently designed flame trench, flame bucket, flame skate ramp, whatever you want to call it. But always good to get a little bit of a pan through here so we can see. Now see, there's a big, look at that big valve at the end. Not a valve, but a, a sort of hammer T on the end of those. Do you see them? The side words, those are cocked at a little bit of an angle there, right? You know, I I actually, I need to look up why there's that weird angle. You see how they go up and then they come back down again and at that weird angle? Like, that is, is that there for a reason or is that just are they clearing some other infrastructure or something like that? Here we've got some concrete pumping happening and a truck going around. Cement truck, I guess, sorry. And Ship 37 being revealed in the Mega Bay. That's Mega Bay 2. Now, still some tile work that needs to be done, but of course, Ship 37 is the ship that we expect to be on the next flight, Flight 10. I think we're going to see some preps here to get this thing ready to roll back out. The launch pad, as promised in the intro to the video, they're going to detach it from the crane here first on both sides. On this side, you can see the lift working because it's turned a little bit of a jaunty angle that we can see. But uh, clearly an important task to make sure it's not connected to the crane when it tries to roll out. A little bit of a, I think we were surprised by this. Why were they up there working on the TPS? Was this critical for the testing and the rollout? 
Were they just stopped for some other reason? So they decided to come up here and, and do this work uh, with something loose, hadn't been secured in the end. It had just been sort of a uh, test fit or something, but it wasn't really secured. I'm not sure what they were doing, but it slowed things down just a little bit as we were waiting for that rollout. Now, the chopsticks start to get in position. You can see them swinging around here because the chopsticks are the cranes for the pad. You don't bring another crane over to lift the ship up. You just use the chopsticks, which is what you use for the whole stack in the first place. A lot of heat turbulence in this shot as the chopsticks sort of swing towards us, but they're literally just setting up their position for the ship to roll in between them and get it mounted on the launch mount. I guess lifted onto the launch mount. After being very patient, we see a little bit of rollout here. So we expect ship 37 to come on out. Now it's going around the backside of the mega bays. Remember all of the gigabay construction, the foundation's footwork, that sort of stuff. You can't come straight out the front anymore, so they have to go around the backside. But here we see it rolling. This is Jack like ran up the road. I'm, I'm guessing maybe Jack... No, I think Jack went in front of it because that's the office building, and so Jack was getting in front of it so it would go past him here. That's why we saw the brief uh, rollout, but before it got on the road, Jack runs over here. Now, the exposure on this is exposed for the engines underneath. Everything else is totally blown out, but that's so that you can see the engines, the three massive Merlin vacuums. That one's a little hard to see. The three sea levels there in the middle. Going to do a quick inspection of the heat shield for ship 37 here. You can see there's still some holes. It's not quite ready for flight yet, but it shouldn't take too terribly long to finish that off and uh, plug the gaps, I guess would be the thing to say for it. You even see some of the underlayment flapping in the breeze in the shadows of uh, some tiles that are missing. From the SBO cameras, see it rolling along the launch site here. This is from the southern view, I guess. We're looking towards the north and it is going to approach the pad and scurry, you could say scurry, scurry is a good verb for the ship, in between the chopsticks. Now, we've seen this happening there between the two legs on the left-hand side. There is that ship disc uh, quick disconnect plate, but because this is not a quick disconnect scenario, they attach it to the side of the ship and then pick it up and then plug those flex hoses into it, right? But they put that on down on the ground and here we go. Chopsticks going to have a chat with the camera operators about moving the camera during a time lapse. It's so tough like to guess all right exactly how high are they going to do it? I'm going to have to zoom out. Do you just hold the line and not move the camera and eh, the top goes out of frame a little bit? Uh, from experience, I know that that's tough sometimes, but you frame enough of them and, and you get to the point where you're like, "All right, let's do it like this and then just not be tempted to change that camera during the time lapse." Here we've got Caesar Catching a close-up of the engine bay. The aft skirt, really. The sort of a, a basement? Skirt's the right thing to say for the engines there at the bottom. Going to come all the way down. You can see the top of the ship adapter stand there. If you haven't been following along, that is the adapter they put in place to uh, allow them to put a ship on the mount where a booster would normally attach. The bottom of a booster, bottom of a ship, not the same. And they need that adapter so that the ship will uh, fit, basically, be supported correctly there on the launch mount. So here's the flexible QD hoses. The plate and the interface to the ship itself is already there. So here they are connecting the flexible hoses to the backside of the plate. Going to check in at Massey's site. May I direct your attention to the aft end of the booster there where most of the engines have been removed. So that's what we were looking at there. Here's some flexi hoses installed. Are we still over at Massey's? Yeah, it looks like it. That the cane in the foreground makes me think this is still Massey's. But got some hoses as they are working on the infrastructure there. You can also see some quick disconnects there in the background. Apparently we got to zoom in on this. That first was an establishing shot, I guess. There's the raptors that were, I guess, not removed. You can't see the raptors that were removed. You can see the empty holes left by the raptors that were removed there on the salvaged bits. But you can also see some sparks flying there. You see the lift is up. You see spark flying coming out. So they're cutting things off of there to disassemble this. Oh. Do we have the crane? Are we actually going to see the raptor fly? All right. That's a little cool. Do the, the raptors not normally lifted in this orientation? Like where's the center of mass for a raptor? 
when you design things like this, a lot of times you'll put fittings uh, in the right lift positions when you're transporting these things or supporting these things or whatever. Clearly, that was not on the center of mass because <laughs> they're not usually... Uh, moved this way. They're not usually lifted horizontally like this. They're transported vertically. And uh, so when they have this sort of salvage operation, you got that swing because that crane was not attached to that piece of equipment center of mass. We do need to get into the Ship 37 testing here, so we're going to get the chopsticks out of the way. EIS doing overtime on the camera. Quick uh, camera note. Sometimes when you see the camera drifting like this, it's because it's super windy. And if you watch it live, hey, it's a DSS test, you don't notice it. But when you speed it up and time lapse it, you see it sort of hunting around as the EIS uh, stabilizes it. So there's that detonation suppression system being tested. Is that... Oh, there's somebody in the... Huh. All right. I, I was drawing my attention to the uh, little skid steer sort of thing. And then somebody got out of it <laughs> during the test. I'm going to assume that the, the site wasn't closed yet. <laughs> but here, a uh, little bit of toughness, Ship 37, trying to get the test done. The lighting angle here tells me this was the first attempt because they didn't get it tested on the first attempt. They had to come back for it. Spoilers, I know. But let's watch the time lapse of the methane load. Look for a little bit of frost on the side of the ship there. You can see some locks as well. Do we see locks yet? I'm squinting down in the test abort. So what we see there in the middle looks like the, the depressurization vent. You can see a valve has opened and pressure is leaving the ship. Here we're going to do some detanking. Really just going to see... Wow, the EIS hunting all over, trying to keep this thing stable. But the ice is melting, is the salient point here, because they were not able to complete the test the first time they did it. Was there a, a leak or something? Was there a GSE problem, I think, is what we were looking at. But they roll out there in true SpaceX style. It's not like, well, that's a six-week delay. No, later that evening, they roll the big lift out. They're going to uh, raise them up and do some work on it, which we'll capture a little bit of here, I think. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> we're replacing a quick disconnect hose. There's the crane pulling something over. Leaky hose, maybe? Fod on the flange? In any event, it was not uh, acceptable for that first test. But they got another one. They put it in position. And uh, those big lifts, I guess those are just cranes there. We get to the next morning. Here we can see the sun is behind us, which tells me it's morning out at Starbase. And that's where we see the DSS going again. And we should get the big spoof of a spin prime. Wait for it. Continuing to wait for it. That looked like the spin prime. Of course, Spin Prime's not nearly as exciting as a static fire, but to hear the thinking, I, honestly, my thinking is they did the static fire before. It seems like maybe they found a leak or something that they didn't quite like during the inspection. Maybe a crack, maybe something that was a little bit out of spec. I don't know exactly what it is. There's that big swoosh of the Spin Prime again. And so they brought it out again, but they didn't need to fire the engines. They just needed to make sure that whatever they did or whatever they observed... Everything was still working. It wasn't leaking, right? So they brought it out. They spooled it up. They ran everything through. They made sure all the, the lights were blinking. Or else the valves were humming and the pumps were humming the way that they were supposed to. But there was no reason to risk firing that thing again. I honestly think there's a possibility that this, let's say Kluge together. <laughs> I appreciate it, but Kluge together test end might not be great to fire those engines on over and over again. So uh, just making sure the ship was still good to go. But... We saw it happen early this morning. That's how fresh the video is. And we wanted to share it with you. Hopefully we get a flight 10 date coming up here sooner rather than later. But we appreciate you all watching. And we will see you nerds later.